First released in December of 2010, the GTX 570 is now a solid 7 years old and can be picked up from $40 to $50 used. It's hard to believe that this card is actually that old. It seems like just yesterday I was installing it in my PC so I could try out the new DayZ mod. Eh, somehow I'm guessing the card aged better than the game did. When the GTX 570 was released, it was hailed as a better and much cheaper option to the GTX 480, which was released just nine months prior. At an MSRP of $350, it was $150 cheaper than the 480 and was marginally better performing than Radeon's competing HD 6950, although the Radeon was a bit cheaper. The GTX 570 was based off of the 40 nanometer Fermi GF110 GPU die, which was an updated variant of the GF100 die, of which the GTX 470 and 480 were based. As a result of the refined die and process, clock speeds were improved as well as power draw. Because of this, the card ran slightly cooler than the infamous GTX 480, albeit not by much. On the die, you would find 480 CUDA cores, the same as you would find on a GTX 480. The core ran at a 732 MHz clock, with the shaders running at 1464 MHz. In addition, you would find 60 texture mapping units, as well as 40 raster operation pipelines. The GTX 570 also came stock with 1280 or 2560 megabytes of GDDR5 with a 320-bit memory bus. In addition, the card was capable of a 152GB per second memory bandwidth. Thanks to the consistent driver updates, this card is capable of running DirectX 12, although not Vulkan. There's always a story behind every piece of hardware, and to me, that's more interesting than the cold, hard stats. Learning the story behind a card can give it character, help personify it, and even give it meaning. And the story behind this particular GTX 570 is very meaningful to me. Likely you'll remember seeing this card in the second shit card showdown, so I hope you'll stick around while I tell its tale and share its history. If you're not that interested, I'll be showing game benchmarks while I tell it to give you an idea of its modern performance. Anyhow, I digress. In early 2011, my friend wanted to build a new computer. He was looking for new hardware and hemming and hawing on what GPU to use, but eventually, after several weeks of research, he eventually came to the EVGA GTX 570. Shortly after the parts were ordered, the build began. He had never built a computer before, so he needed some help. And I had been building computers since 2003, so I was a logical choice, and I stopped by and we built it. With an i5-2500K, 8 gigs of DDR3, it was a powerhouse. It ripped through benchmarks and tore through games. I'll be honest, I was a bit jealous. At the time, I was rocking a Core 2 Duo 6550 and an 8800 GTS. It was a mediocre machine at best. Even so, we played all sorts of games together, whatever was popular at the time. Minecraft, Battlefield 3, Team Fortress 2, Payday, DayZ, you name it. But as time moved on, so did my friend's desire for even better graphics. Eventually, towards the fall of 2013, he upgraded to the new, at the time, GTX 770. And there I was, still rocking the 8800 GTS. The CPU got a bump to a Q6600, but my GPU was really starting to struggle. So, after some deliberation and haggling, I took the card off his hands in early 2014. Finally, after years of low-end gaming, I felt that mislaid, glorious feeling of being able to hit 60 FPS in a modern game. It was wondrous, it was striking, it was breathtaking. I didn't even know what to do with all that power. I could play games and record them while still getting decent frame rates. So, really, that's what I did. I started up a small Let's Play channel. That was back when they were in their heyday, so naturally I found at least a modicum of success doing it, which wasn't too hard, because back then people flocked to Let's Plays like stink on shit. However, that fun hobby became work, and that work became tedious, and it was no longer fun, so I had to call it quits. However, during that time on the channel, I upgraded the 570 to a GTX 770 in the middle of 2015, and that's what I've stuck with ever since, for the most part, but we'll save that for another time. I always had a fondness for the 570. Just like your favorite pet that takes your socks and hides them under the Davenport, this card has its flaws, too. Whenever I was in a long gaming session with my bedroom door closed, it heated it up better than any space heater ever could. In fact, if you stuck your hand behind the blower, you were likely to get burned. 
I remember I had an old piece of plastic from some piece of packaging behind the computer once, and you could distinctly see where the GPU had partly melted it, causing deep ripples and waves in the otherwise untouched plastic. In addition, it wasn't very quiet either. The blower design was loud, especially in comparison to the more modern twin fan design cards. However, I had just gotten off using an 8800 GTS blower, so it really didn't bother me much. After the card had been sitting around unused for a while, I decided I wanted to do something with it. I wanted to make a build, a budget build, as cheap as I could to see if I could game on it. That idea was actually what sparked a little fire in my mind. It got me thinking, researching. It's what gave me an idea for this channel. Unfortunately, the build I made was utter shit and didn't work very well, so it never made its way into a video. Hmm, maybe someday, but... What makes this GPU special is that through its seven year existence, it's made a profound impact on my friend, me, and ultimately without its inspiration it gave me, I wouldn't be here talking with you guys. With all that said, the benchmarks are wrapped up, so let's take a look at some numbers. As you saw, all of the games were tested at some level of 1080p. And all of the games, with the exception of Ghost Recon, had great to acceptable frame rates. In less demanding eSport games like Overwatch and Fortnite, we were able to increase the detail while still getting a very good performance. For an almost 8-year-old card, it handled the AAA games like a champ as well. Doom ran smooth as silk at 1080p medium settings. Despite the 37 FPS average, the frame times show very few spikes lending to a smooth overall performance. GTA V ran great at 1080p low. With a 96 FPS average and a 1% low of 56, you could probably increase the settings a bit, depending on your desired level of fidelity. For me, I'd rather have the frames in this game. Either way, the 570 handles this game nicely. Subnautica is a stunningly beautiful game at these settings, and this card handles it well. It really is quite a beautiful game, and the low frame times that it managed lend nicely to help immerse you by giving you fluid movement, which is important in a game that takes place almost entirely underwater. Player's Unknown Battleground was surprisingly acceptable. I mean, it wasn't great, but considering how poorly optimized it is and how old the 570 is, I'm surprised we managed to get past the 40 FPS mark. It may not look great at 1080p low, but it's entirely playable with only an occasional stutter that isn't that game-breaking. Killing Floor 2 is a bit of a mixed bag, along with Ark and Ghost Recon. Although at 1080p medium the frame rate of Killing Floor 2 is decent, the stuttering and frame times were not. At random intervals throughout the fight, the frames would skip in an often jarring fashion. This can easily be seen on the frame times graph. Ark suffered a similar fate, but with less jarring frame drops. That being said, the overall frame rate was lower as well at these settings. In Ghost Recon, not only were the frame rates poor, but the textures artifacted and it was just a plain bad gaming experience. This is almost entirely expected as this is a large open world game that is inherently difficult to run, especially on low VRAM cards. But we're not done yet. I feel as though some overclocking would be indispensable in giving more playable frame rates in those titles. So that's exactly what we did. I overclocked the core to 825MHz, the shaders to 1650 and increased the RAM by 100MHz as well. We reran two of the games we had difficulty with earlier, and these are those results. In ARC we indeed see a better frame rate. The 1% low from the overclocked run was only 5% off the average from the stock run. In addition, it also felt much smoother. But Ghost Recon saw the biggest improvement. With a 44% increase in average frame rates, it pushed it easily into the playable realm. In addition, the overclock seemed to get rid of the texture artifacting that we had going on earlier. The fact that a nearly 8-year-old GPU can play one of the most demanding titles of 2017 at 1080p is thoroughly noteworthy. In my personal opinion, the GTX 570 has aged quite well. If you have one, it's still a perfectly capable card so long as you temper your expectations to a realistic degree. In addition, if you can find one cheap, it would be a decent choice for a 1080p esports PC. This card had a commendable history and with continued driver support, the future looks just as bright. So keep on rockin' GTX 570, and we'll see you in another seven years.